This is your instructor, Carolyn Kuski, and I wanted to walk through um, some of the particulars about theme two, which begins in week three. So let's look, at, take a detailed look at what you're going to be doing over the next two weeks because they are connected. Uh, theme two is called Investigating History, so you're going to be delving more deeply into the practices of being a historian. And it's important that you understand that all the coursework from here forward, really included week two also, is taking you down the path to the final presentation that you're going to prepare in week eight. You don't give the presentation to anyone, but you do submit it, which is a large part of your final grade. So uh, everything you do in, in the next few weeks is going to lead you up to that final presentation. Now, I know in week two you were able to look outside of the um, SNHU website for sources. Um, that is no longer allowed. From here on in the future, you must use the research kit, and I believe you can see my pointer pointing to it. I've given you a link there that takes you to um, all the sources in the research kit provided. Now, the good thing about this is you don't have to do Google searches or try and find reputable sources uh, for the rest of your coursework. They're all provided in the research kit. They're divided out by primary and secondary, and they're categorized um, by the major categories that you're going to be looking into and learning about. So please do not submit anything with outside uh, sources in it because you will be, uh, you'll lose points on your grade. This week you're going to begin a two-week discussion that uh, this week, week three, you will post uh, your research question and some of the information that you um, want to discuss there. Next week, you will post to two of your classmates posting from week three. So this is a two week long continuing discussion which will not be graded until after the end of week four. So don't look for your grade for the discussion post in week three until the end of week four. This week you're also going to complete a secondary source worksheet and I'm going to talk about that uh, in more detail here in just a minute. So in week three one of the things you're going to do is choose a topic that you want to investigate from the sources provided in the research kit. So be sure that you allow yourself to be guided by what's available in the resource kit, uh, research kit. You can't just think of a topic on your own and then decide you're going to investigate that topic because the sources in the research kit may not provide you with answers. So that's very important to remember that. You're also going to learn to write a thesis argument, which uh, is just a statement about your paper, telling the reader or the viewer what you're going to be talking about. And it also, it's not just a narrative, you're going to be proving a point. In other words, you're going to suggest an idea and then you're going to say, my research will show why, blah, blah, blah. And you to prove your point that you're making in your thesis statement. So it can be a general paragraph, which is the way uh, these instructions take you to write the thesis and pay close attention to those uh, instructions so you learn how to do that because that's going to be part of your uh, grade also in your final presentation. You're going to be looking at what's called historical lenses, which is just the viewpoint that a historian takes to look at history. For instance, I'm a social historian, so I study the lives of individuals. Now, that can be very broad. I can study the lives of individuals um, in an econ with an economic um, focus, with a political fo focus, with a military focus, um, with, a, with a familial relationship. Uh, focus with an environmental fo I always I have a field in environmental history so I often study how environmental change has infected has affected the people every historian uses a different 
lens with which they view history or sometimes multiple lenses. So that's what you're going to be learning about uh, this week and you're going to also learn how to analyze the sources provided in light of those historical lenses. That'll be made clear in the instructions in week three and I'm also going to talk about that in another slideshow. So in week three in all of the modules, it's important that you do each activity and read all the material in the order that it's presented. I know there's a lot of reading in these weekly modules and a lot of students don't care for reading, but that is how you become educated. And even more important maybe to you <laughs> is how you make a good grade. And I encourage every single person to go for an A in this class and in all your college classes. If you shoot for just making a C, that's what you're going to make. You're not going to make an A if you shoot for a C. So please um, uh, pr proceed with the diligence and the determination that you are going to make an A in the class because it's totally possible. All you have to do is follow the instructions okay, and ask questions when you need to. So this week you're going to um, <coughs> take two quizzes. You're going to post to the discussion board, as I already mentioned, and you're going to prepare a secondary source worksheet. I'm going to talk about that next. So if you look at the format of the worksheet, it looks like there's just one line for each question or each topic there, and it looks like you only need to write a few words. That is not, that's very misleading and not correct. You need to write a thorough answer to every question. It could be a paragraph, it could be two paragraphs, whatever you think is required to thoroughly answer that question and demonstrate your understanding. So don't be fooled by that, by that very short format of the secondary worksheet. It's going to ask you to provide an APA citation for the source you're using from the research kit. You can copy and paste that from the research kit, but you also need to use this link here that I've provided for the APA citation guide. You're going to be using that citation format throughout the course. And um, one of the difficulties, I guess you could say, of publishing for historians is that every publisher requires a specific citation format. And believe me, if you have too many spaces in it, if you have a paragraph, I mean a, a comma out of place, um, they will reject your manuscript. So citation format is very important to historians. And that's one of the reasons why this is emphasized so much in this course. Now, uh, one thing you I want to continue to emphasize, I'm going to be doing this every week, closely read the instructions and closely look at that rubric. The rubric is what is going to determine your grade. That's what I look at when I'm grading your submissions. And if the rubric requires something and you don't have it, you're going to lose points. I don't have any choice in that. This, uh, the rubric is very specific. So if you've never used rubrics before, there's a link there in every assignment on to take you to it. And uh, it's to your advantage to follow, to be familiar with the rubric and to follow it. It's different for every single submission. Okay, final um, slide here. Ask for help anytime. Questions do not make students look stupid. They make students look like they want to learn. And I want to teach. <laughs> it's a little frustrating to be a teacher in an online course because I don't get to see you face to face. I can't explain things the way I would like to. The only way I can do that is if I know what your confusion is and you have to email me about that. So um, I want to teach you if you will just ask questions, okay? I'm here, f I'm here to help you. Don't, don't ever hesitate to ask. Good luck with week three, and um, I'll see you in cyberspace.